All right, everybody, today we are talking about the top four monthly dividend ETFs that all pay over a 10% annual dividend yield. So uh, SDIV pays 15%, QYLD pays 13%, JEPI pays 11%, and KBWD pays 10.75%. If you are wanting to get paid dividends every month and maximize your cash flow, this video is for you. And I'm going to tell you exactly why most investors should never own these monthly paying dividend ETFs. Let's get to the video. All right, this is going to be the shortest video that explains this in the most basic terms because this is literally all you need to know. We can see right here, right now, this list is ranked by dividend yield, right? SDIV, QILD, JEPI, KBWD, those are all the top dividend yielders with over 10% dividend yields. Then we've got DIV at a 6.5% dividend yield, PGX 6.29, SPHD, wait, we're getting low here, 3.92%, that's a monthly yielder. SCHD, hold on, this only pays a quarterly dividend at 3.37%, that's, that's not that much. DHS, 3.32, that's monthly. VYM, 3% quarterly, and VIG, 2% quarterly. I would. Why would you ever own those? Well, it's because investing is about more than just dividend income, right? And oh, I have a little secret for you. These top monthly paying dividend ETFs, their dividends are shrinking. Let's take a look at SDIV, right? It was one of the 15% yielders or whatever. If you're buying this because you need that reliable monthly income, well, look at how it's actually gone down when you're looking at total dividends that you're paid, not percent. So if you buy at this level, in 2017, you were making a 12 cent dividend per share every month. Ooh, then it went up to 14. That's awesome. We got some dividend growth. Uh-oh. 2019, it drops to 11. So those same shares, you're making less in dividends than you were when you previously invested, right? Oh, hold on. 2020, we're down to 8 cents. So your dividend income was cut by 30 to 40% on these dividend cuts. And now, okay, we've gotten up to nine, we've gotten up to 10, and then, oh man, we're back down to nine cents in dividends per month, per share, which is about 30% lower than the dividend income that you were receiving in 2017. Let's look and see if this is, if it's just that fund or if it's these other dividend paying funds as well. And QILD is the same thing, right? Starts at 26, some drops to 21, 20, 20 down and, and now we're at 16 cents. We started at 26 if we look at 2014, even if we wanna to look to 2014 when it had already dropped, you're at 19 cents. Now you're at 16 cents per month, dropped as well. KBWD, we're looking over 10 years here. You start in 2012 at 18 cents. You drop down to 11 cents in 2021 and now we're at 14 cents. Every single one of these high dividend yielding funds have actually paid you less in dividends over time. Okay, let's also look at the worst performing ones year to date because if you're making, let's say a $100,000 investment or a million dollar investment and pulling dividends off of that, you also want that to not shrink over time, right? Well, if you're being conservative, that's a major problem if it does. SDIV is down 31%, PGX 22%, Q QILD down 21% and KBWD down 19% year to date, right? This is where I think these monthly dividend ETFs are an absolute trap for most people, right? Now, there's also capital appreciation, right? We need capital appreciation. This takes into consideration total returns. That's dividend pay, dividends paid plus the growth of the actual ETF that you own. We look out to three years, the top performing ones, every single one of the top performing ones is a quarterly dividend payer, right? 42% for SCHD, 27% for VYM, 26% for VIG. And we look down to SDIV, which is that top dividend payer, minus 41% three-year total returns. Absolutely crushing if you're owning that. You get less dividends and your capital is worth less as well. Your initial investment is worth less. That is crushing if you're depending on that for income. Five-year total returns. Again, SCHD, VIG, VYM, all at the top. Again, the bottoms, SDIV, PGX, and KBWD is up 2% over the last five years. This is total returns. It incorporates dividends as well. 10-year total returns. 
SCHD, 244%, VIG, 199%, VYM, 187%. And if you notice, the ones that pay the lower dividends here, the monthly ones that pay the lower, DHS and SPHD are also beating KBWD, PGX, SDIV, which are those high dividend payers. SDIV is still down 22% over the last 10 years, okay? And so what I would much rather do is invest in something that's gonna have capital appreciation plus a dividend, plus dividend growth like SCHD, VIG or VYM. And if I was gonna do anything, I would just pull a little bit out of that if I needed more income to live off of. I would just pull a little bit out of my investments if I needed to supplement that dividend income. And let's see how that dividend income has changed over time. And this goes to the basics of how these funds are built, right? SCHD, VIG, and VYM own shares of underlying companies. They own stock and companies that pay dividends and focus on growing their dividends over time. These other ones own some shares of companies, either in the S&P 500 or the NASDAQ, and then they sell covered calls on top of it. So you're never gonna get that capital appreciation growth. And if there's less volatility in the market or if the market goes down, they're not going to be able to continue paying as much of a dividend, which is exactly what we have seen. And so look at SCHD's dividend history since 2012. They started with a 12 cent dividend yield. 2014, it was up to 23 cents. 2017, 2016, it was up to 40 cents. 2019, 42, 49, 54, 59, in 70 cents per quarter, all the way up from 12 or 14 cents per quarter. And then sure, it has dipped a little bit. So it's at 64 cents per quarter. You tell me which one is gonna give you more income over time. Okay, and this is the growth of $10,000 with counting for dividends and share price appreciation in each of these funds since 2013. $10,000 in SCHG, in SCHD has turned into $26,000. VIG has turned into $23,000. QILD has turned 10,000 into 16,000. KBWD has ten, turned 10,000 into 13,000. And SDIV has turned 10,000 into $7,000. So you've got a loss in SDIV overall, a total loss in SDIV. And SCHD and VIG have more than doubled, okay? So don't get tricked by all these videos about monthly cash flow generating paying dividend ETFs, okay? That's not necessarily the best option. Maybe they are good for some people if I don't know who, but for most investors that are, especially if you're adding money over time, you are literally throwing opportunity cost away if you're not doing research and thinking about other options other than monthly paying dividend ETFs or even monthly paying dividend stocks. And just for fun, let's look at these Morningstar ratings. SDIV gets a one-star rating. QILD, a three-star rating. Jeppy doesn't even get a rating. KBWD, a one star rating, it's negative. Let's look at SCHD, five stars. Let's look at VIG, four stars, okay? If you like this type of content and if it's helpful, it helps you think different, you can help support me by liking the video and subscribing to the channel, completely free to you. It helps me and it helps more people find us. Let me know what other funds you want me to review in the comments.